Hello and welcome to GolfWeek.com. I'm Lance Ringler. Joining me today is someone special in this part of the country, <laughs> Steve Wilmot, the tournament director for the PGA Tour's RBC Heritage and this week's tournament director for the Players Amateur. Steve, thanks for joining us. Uh, thanks for having us. Steve, first question. Let's talk about something that I talked to you about yesterday. I've been around golf for a long time and I don't really know what a PGA Tour tournament director does. I know what tournament directors do at the amateur level, the college level, but can you explain to us a little bit in, in just a couple minutes on what a PGA Tour tournament director does? Sure. As you saw my response last, yesterday, I'm not really sure what I do or we do, but uh, you know, it's, what's interesting is um, from the tournament director side and uh, our staff, is it's really about outside the rope. Um, all my counterparts out there, all, all the, the great efforts that are put forth, is it's truly about the experience. But it's uh, you know it's the, it's not the competition side. You know the the PGA Tour and the rules really handle that. Uh, um, but we're sales marketing, which is a 24/7 uh, effort for the entire staff you know, is a part of. But then uh, the operations, which is anything from obviously the the setup. Uh, which is Porta John's, courtesy cars, uh, uh, electrical power, bleachers, tents, and, uh, and all that. But then you also have uh, you know, all the sponsor sales and things too. But it, it truly is a 53 weeks out of the year effort as well as you know, 13 months out of the year effort to, um, you know, to put on an event. D does your job include recruiting the players? Uh, you know, some some of us do. You know, yes, it's a part of it, and one of the reasons we're here right now. This is a part of recruitment for us in the, for the future. Uh, that's one of the reasons we're involved in the players' amateur. It's uh, it's about player relations. Uh, I've been around long enough uh, that I realize that schedules change. You know, players aren't going to play every week. Players aren't going to play every year. And uh, but if you can build these relationships up, you know, we like we're doing this week, trying to show a PGA Tour experience that they'll hopefully remember and be able to come to the, you know, us and see us in April. Your event's a little bit unique, the PGA Tour event, because where it falls on the schedule. How, is that difficult because it's a week after the Masters? No, it, it works great for us. You know, I mean, uh, everybody wants to have, obviously, the strongest field and the best players in the world, and uh, yes, we would want that too, And uh, but we fall the week after the Masters, uh, which truly is one of the premier event in, in, in the world. And we lose some players because of that, but we also get a lot of international players too, and that's what we want. We want the best players in the world here, and uh, they kind of decompress this, you know, the week after uh, uh, being us. Uh, you, you see guys on bikes, you see them in shorts, you, you, know, you see them take them go home to the beach, you see them walking around Harbor Town and going out on a boat, and it's something that they can't do in a lot of other places um, in the you know the controlled area that we have in Hilton. What about the purse of a PGA Tour event? Do you, does you do you and your group have anything to do with the purse? Uh, well, the, the the purse is really dictated by the tour with our our agreement with the tour. Are we a part of paying that process? Yes. Uh, television obviously supports that effort, but uh, you know that's our responsibility, and uh, you know the responsibility of the Heritage Classic Foundation is. To, um, which we have the contract with the PGA Tour, which we also have the contract with the title sponsor, and then we also have a facility use agreement with uh, the Sea Pines Resort to host the event and things too. But you know we're the ones responsible for raising the money, and uh, uh, but we're also um, in a position you know, we do what we do for the bottom line. That's giving back to charity, and this year uh, we'll be giving close to right around three million dollars, and that's uh, that's a pretty good story and it, uh, that's what's uh, very rewarding to myself and our staff and the, and the members of the foundation. What's the one unique thing that you hear from players over the years about coming to Harbor Town and the PGA Tour event? What's one thing that sticks out? Why do they enjoy this event? Well, it's one of those things, unfortunately for us too, and uh, um, the players really sold our event a couple of years ago when we were looking for, uh, um, for a title sponsor. Um, you know, we thought it was going to be easier than it, and it wasn't as easy as we thought. But uh, the players and the media really sold the event and the fact, the history and the tradition. And it doesn't have to be a cookie cutter golf course where you just grip and rip it and hit it long. And it's it's a shop maker's golf course. Anybody can really uh, can play. And if you look at our past champions, it's truly the, the the premier golfers that have won the event and things too. So. Um, but they do like the relaxed atmosphere. I mean, traditionally it is around Easter and spring breaks, which leads into uh, uh, families, more families coming. Uh, um, a lot of guys walk in the car paths or bike paths with their shoes to go to the locker room because of uh, you know, the fact that it's, it is in a you know, community like that. 
shifting gears to the player examiner and your role here as the tournament director. Talk about that a little bit and you talked about how you're building relationships, but just your role here this week and, and this event. Well, it's, a, it's the same thing, but on a completely different level. Again, I have a, a, an incredible staff that um, puts everything together and again there's an operation component to it there's a sales component to it and one thing that I did talk about on the heritage side too you know you can't do events without the fact of uh, um, volunteers and it's it's uh, uh, that's so key to it so there is a volunteer component of it that we are involved with the volunteers in running the event but uh, um, you know we're in this wonderful community great facilities uh, uh, you know it's the same amount of hours I mean obviously right. they're not really crowd control issues or Porta Johnny's overflowing right now, or uh, a parking and things too, which we wish there would be more of that. But uh, um, our role again is, um, you know, the nuts and bolts and working with the uh, the club. And the, you know, the unique thing is, and it's something that took us a couple years. Uh, we're actually Duke Delcher and Tom McKnight, the co-founders, and lobbying to have us involved, but also lobbying us to give an exemption to the heritage right. and. Uh, it's not. It's the toughest job, and all my counterparts out there, whether it's Kim Huffman or Mark Brazel or Steve Timms, I can go on and on. The toughest part of our jobs are the exemptions, right. but we do give the winner of the Players Amateur an exemption, and uh, um, that actually is is been great for us as well, and it obviously adds to the. Uh, Absolutely. Um, to the success of this tournament too with the field knowing these guys and when you look at the fact of our past right. champions Ricky Fowler and Bud Collies and Bill Haas and Camelia Vijegas, it's, it's pretty good stuff. Real quick, how many, how many volunteers do you have for PGA Tour event for yours? Uh, we have a, over 1,200 uh, volunteers and that, that doesn't even count our concessions that are run by civic organizations that volunteer their time. It's their biggest fundraiser during the course of the year. And you know everyone's name, right? <laughs> They're all, and you know what, it, it's truly, if, if we were to give uh, our volunteers a, you know, a, a dollar an hour for their, their time, we'd give nothing away to charity, so we couldn't do it without right. the, the volunteers. All right, well, thanks for joining us, Steve. No, thanks for all your support and continuing support, and good luck with uh, everything you all do. Thank you so much, and for continued coverage of all your golf news, continue to go to golfweek.com.